What's going on guys, Andrew Pillick Hockey here back again with another video and some of you guys are probably alarmed at the title and alarmed at the thumbnail. Let me just start off by saying this, there is a realistic and an unrealistic team that I've put together in this video. You guys asked for it, lots of comments asked for it. I mean, you could kind of say both are realistic, but by the look of the thumbnail, you guys are probably like, okay, no way, this guy is nuts. But we're going to talk about it. Um, if you are new here, make sure to like this video and subscribe. Uh, if you know, if you feel like you like the content, I'd really appreciate it. It does help the channel if you do like this and subscribe. If you don't want to do both, you could do one or the other. I would just greatly appreciate it. Uh, nonetheless, thank you to all the new viewers lately. Um, I greatly appreciate it. But let's talk about the Leafs. And by the way, leave suggestions for videos down below. Uh, I definitely love that. So basically what I did today was look at some big moves that the Maple Leafs can make. And it's it's kind of made up of two rosters. And one of them is incomplete, even though it's complete. Uh, the first one is the very complete one because I spent right to the to the salary cap. <laughs> like I went right to the salary cap. And this one is the more realistic um, view of what the Maple Leafs could do. And this first one is the Maple Leafs solely doing um, what I think is a possibility and that's spending a lot of money in free agency. Now, you're going to see, um, first of all, Kerfoot going to Seattle. We're just going to assume that he ends up on Seattle because it's pretty realistic at this point. The Maple Leafs picks are depleted here. Making trades involving their picks is something that's going to be very difficult for them to, to do. Uh, I'd imagine... This first will probably be in play at the deadline, depending on where they are. Probably this second, I don't know. But guys, the Leafs don't have a lot of picks. They they have to hope that a lot of their young guys come up uh, and do the damn thing. They have to come up and actually be good. So as you can see, $20,000 in cap space. Um, I'm sure some people watching this video have that in their bank account. I'm I'm very I'm I'm sure that's very possible. <laughs> but um, I went right up to the salary cap. You're going to see some familiar names here. You're going to see some new names. Now, by the way, I don't consider myself some wizard when it comes to the cap. I've gotten predictions right when it comes to money. I've been way off, you know, under, over, whatever. Everybody does it. So um, if I'm overpaying somebody or if I'm underpaying somebody, again, I'm just a dude who makes YouTube videos. This is just an educated guess. But we've all seen... When it comes to the salary cap, when it comes to free agency, teams can get wild. I don't know. But Blake Coleman at 4.8. Now, the reason why I want to start off with Blake Coleman is because I think a lot of people would be really interested in him. He can play both sides of the wing. Um, if it's not Blake Coleman, you could make a trade for a guy like Raquel possibly. But if you could get Coleman and give him a little bit of a raise... That would be very interesting. And by a little bit of a raise, it would be quite a bit. His last contract was $1.8 million. Now, if we look at his production, you're going to think, damn, that's a lot of money. The reason why I did that, I overpaid to see if the, you know, basically overpaid just to see um, if he would sign. Again, I'm this isn't like something where I'm asking the player or whatever. I'm just hypothetically acting like if I was the one giving out the contract, 31 points in 55 games played on a very talented Tampa team. And as you can see in the playoffs, they're producing um, quite a bit, nine points in 20 games played on a, again, like I said, on a deep Tampa team. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of different guys that have their um, their points out there. And, and I think that he's a guy that's at least contributing to their success. Now, again, you could say that I overpaid. I'm going to keep bringing that up. Um, but I do believe that you have to overpay to get certain guys to come to Toronto. And again, this is hypothetically me overpaying is better because if the Leafs get him cheaper, that that's great. But I think that he would probably be a better fit um, for Kyle Dubas and Brendan Shanahan's philosophy. The Leafs kind of got away from their like skill um, philosophy when they when they brought in all the veterans and, you know, the tougher side, which is good. They kept Simmons. I'm sure they're going to try to keep a Gosian, not in this team that I've created, but Going out there and just signing a bunch of guys that, you know, have done it in the playoffs, have a lot of skill, 
have a lot of great intangibles. I mean, look at the way Coleman has played. I think that he's done a really good job, but I think that he's a def he's definitely an option. Uh, and at 4.8, I would personally think that that's a bit of an overpay, but you never know when it comes to free agency. So he'd be playing with Matthews and Marner. Then I have Nick Foligno coming back at 2.5. Again, I'm going to mention this again. For some reason on Twitter, it went not viral, but like a, like semi-viral um, that people were using me as the source that Felino was like going to take a pay cut to stay in Toronto. I never said that uh, in a video. I said that it was possible. I heard it on a radio hit. I, I definitely didn't come up with the rumor. I definitely didn't get the, the information from somebody, but it's been widely reported on radio. Again, I'm going to say this, not from me, but it's been reported now. And I even listened to uh, I think it was the Leafs report or something like that. They were talking about the fact that Felino might want to come back at 2.5 or maybe that wasn't the number, but they're saying cheap, like to come back as like unfinished business. Guys, Columbus, it would be the other destination where he would go. That team is falling apart. If he wants to go there, um, basically just to for family reasons, he totally should. And I think that that's amazing. But if he wants another kick at this and, you know, he kind of had unfinished business, and he's got to be healthy. The problem is, is that Nick Felino, when he's healthy, is a much different player. He would have played much better than what the Leafs, you know, got him as. Now, mind you, it was, it, again, it was reported that he did pass his physical coming to Toronto. And he also got injured, apparently. That, that bad injury happened during a game that he was playing for the Maple Leafs. So, I wouldn't blame Dubas for that one. Uh, apparently, he was completely fine coming to Toronto, but he would be playing with Nylander and Tavares. Then I have Nick Robertson with Mikel Granlin. Again, could be an underpayment, could be an overpayment at 4.1 with Jason Spezza. Now, we'll get back to Granlin in a second, but Mikheyev, Brooks, and Simmons would you know, be a not the best fourth line. But when you're spending money on two impact forwards on a lineup, you definitely... Um, have to bite the bullet a little bit, but that's not a bad fourth line, to be honest with you. Um, so moving over to Granlin here, he's 29. So you're definitely paying him as a win now situation here. Uh, this would be a little bit of an increase on his last contract. He's seen the big bucks before, but it would be an in increase on this contract. And he's played quite well. I mean, nothing too crazy, but enough where, like, look at this past playoffs, five points in six games played. Pretty good production considering a lot of Leaf players didn't show up in the playoffs this year. Uh, 27 points in 51 games played, 30 before that, 49 before that, 67, 69. Could you imagine if he can find a little bit of this 40-point magic on that third line with the Toronto Maple Leafs? That, that would be a great depth move. It would obviously be your Kerfoot replacement. Now, mind you, um, he would be more expensive than Kerfoot. But if you think that he fits in better with this team, then it would make sense. Uh, again, you guys could choose guys that you can put in that spot instead of Coleman and Granlin. I'm just saying if the Leafs were to go out and spend that money, you know, over $8 million in free agency on forwards, they, they could grab those two guys. They could grab Felino. They can get a good lineup they can bring back guys because Felino healthy is a, is an improvement Granlin and Coleman is those are two like Coleman especially like that's a very big improvement Granlin would give you a little bit more of what you want on that third line even though I, I do think Kerfoot played quite well with Galchenyuk and Nylander in the playoffs but it looks like he's probably going to Seattle so that would be what I would look like in the forward position. Now, the defense, because of the money being spent, would probably be the same. And guys, the blue line wasn't the problem to me. The Leafs couldn't score. So Riley Brody, you stay, you go, you leave Riley there. You don't trade him in this scenario, which, again, I'm going to be doing scenarios with Riley being traded eventually. Muzzin and Hall. And then you have a young blue line here of Sandin and Lilligren. If you don't believe in Lilligren, then you have to make some adjustments here to to bring back Bogosian or Dermot. But I think Lilligren's ready. I mean, you could even trade Hall, bring in Lilligren into that top four and put Bogosian there with Sandine. I, I think Lilligren is going to be just as good, if not better than... Actually, you know, I'm just going to say it. I think Lilligren's better than Hall. Um, but again, that... 
eventually i'm gonna say eventually people need to really watch him play first i've seen him play quite a bit and i've also talked to a lot of people that have watched him play a lot and they study him and they say lilligren is ready and i mean i agree i definitely do and uh he's very he's developed a two-way game now before i get to the madness of this next cat friendly team that i've created i am not saying this is going to happen but if you are going to trade Mitch Marner, you're not going to win that trade. You're not getting back the same value unless you're trading him and you're signing a bunch of depth players and this team becomes just a four-line juggernaut, which to me doesn't happen unless you're the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Maple Leafs, if they're going to trade Mitch Marner, what if they looked at Jack Eichel? <laughs> Again, guys, this is just for fun. But hypothetically, why would you trade Mitch Marner and not try to get a massive impact piece back? It makes sense. Eichel doesn't want to be in Buffalo. Buffalo knows they got to get rid of him. Why not get a superstar replacement? Guys, you got to remember, these teams have to sell tickets. They got to sell jerseys. They got to keep the doors open. When Eichel bounces and if they don't get a sizable return back for him that's impact right now, nobody's showing up but again this is just fantasy land here this is just hypotheticals Tavares would move to the wing people are going to scratch their head at that but if you let just if you just let Johnny T play on the wing with Matthews and Nylander hey I mean that could work that could definitely work we've seen centermen go to the wing and have a lot of success I believe Stamkos is definitely an option or uh, a, a guy that did that um, quite a bit I would 100% do that. Then you got Felino coming back again at 2.5 with Jack Eichel as a second line centerman and Galchenyuk on the right. And Galchenyuk played quite well and you could upgrade on him because look at this cap space. 9.9 .9 million. You got Robertson, Spezza, Simmons, Engvall, Brooks, Mikheyev. So you could easily make upgrades to this bottom six. The blue line would stay the same, but you could easily make an upgrade here if you wanted to. And you just got to sign a backup goaltender, but the roster is full. So the Leafs would have $9.9 .9 $9 dollars. They could upgrade in the bottom six. They could upgrade on the blue line, which to me, I wouldn't touch it until the trade deadline. So you could go in with this blue line, which is very good. They proved it last year with the exception of Lilligren being there. And again, you could, you could sign a guy um, like Bogosian. Get a goaltender in the two to three million dollar range. And then you literally would have money to upgrade this bottom six or even getting another great player for the top six. But again, this is just hypotheticals. Um, it, the, the main portion of the trade would be obviously Eichel for Marner. The Leafs might have to include something. I don't, I don't even know how that trade would work, but basically the only pieces from the roster the main roster would be Marner and Eichel I, I just can't see how anything else would be included um, in terms of roster players it would be like picks and prospects and throwing around like RFA contracts probably but again listen to me when I'm saying this the Leafs more than likely are not going to trade for Jack Eichel by trading Mitch Marner but hypothetically this is the biggest trade that would make sense for both teams these guys, Marner, he loves being a Maple Leaf. But guess what? If you can't perform in the playoffs and the Leafs want to try out a different guy that can perform in the playoffs who would cost them a little less money, I mean, we don't know what Eichel could do in the playoffs. And he's unhappy in Buffalo. Maybe it makes sense for Eichel to, to be on that second line and just tear it up. You could get him better wingers. Maybe you move Nylander down and throw Galchenyuk up on that top line. Maybe you throw Felino up on the first line and you put Tavares down in the second line. Guys, there's options in that roster. They would have $9.9 .9 million and the only position that's not filled is that backup goaltender position. And again, like I said, I wouldn't even touch that blue line until the deadline. You could upgrade this forward group and a backup goaltender with $9.9 .9 million. No problem. But again, hypotheticals, fantasy candy land, basically, at this point. That's just, that's just an opinion here. Again, it's just a thought. 
you guys asked me to do some crazy Jack Eichel cap friendly roster and I did it. This video was a lot longer than I expected. If you sat through this, um, I don't, I was going to say type Eichel for Marner, but people will probably get ticked off. But if you want to do it, be my guest. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, if you have any su video suggestions, like I said, make sure to comment them down below. Liking and subscribing helps this channel quite a bit. So please do so if you like the content. Uh, again, do love and appreciate you guys as always. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video or stream. Michael Vermarner. Just kidding. Peace.